this time I'm gonna start off from my last time where I left off. So we will tell if statements if else if and else or if and else. Now I'm gonna teach you about nested ifs. Nested ifs is nothing but if statement within an if statement. So if you've got here like age is more than equal sixty or age is less than equals AE then we can implement this using a nested if statement like uh, okay okay let's do it this way we, we, we are gonna remove this and we're gonna implement this in a way that if the age is more than 60 then the commit will check if the age is more than AE, if the age is less than AE. If it is, then it will say that you are quite old. And it will check another time that if age is less than 100, and it is between AE and 100, then it will say that you are terrific. Okay? So, age is. Okay, so to do that, we must remove this. Then another check if age less than equals AE. Then this else if age less than equals 100 okay so you are terrific t small right so i'm going to compile it using f4 key so it's equal to zero and i'm going to run it using f5 key Okay, we're gonna check if they just what happened if they just less than AE. I'm gonna type in 70. You're quite old. See, that works. I'm gonna rerun it. And I'm gonna check what happened if they age is 90. That is less than 100. So 90. You're terrific. So, you can have such flexibility using nested ifs. However, uh, usage of nested ifs is not recommended by many since it is a bit complex because if you mess up the if you mess up the brackets like from here to here and if you if you don't put this or just do or, or just I don't know somehow mess up then it's gonna be really complex the whole thing is gonna I mean you must you will screw up however if you figure out a simple method I mean if you take care of the brackets then everything is good Okay, our next thing is about for loops. We're gonna make a program which will display a set of stars. I mean, the user will ask for a specified number of stars, and the program will display that number of stars. So, to do that, first import java x dot swing dot j option pane sorry public stars okay public static void string args we're gonna define an integer variable called n and it's gonna be assigned integer dot parse int j option pane dot show input dialog null stars close that one uh, okay there are three types of loops first is for loop you can run the for loop for a specified number of times. Like if you want to run a five time loop, then you can use the for loop. Second one is the while loop. The loop will run a, a, until a condition is met. That is a while loop. And the third one is do while loop, which will do something and then check if the condition is true. While loop checks if the condition is true and then runs the root loop. Well, do while loop runs the loop and then checks for the condition. First, let's start with the. Okay, right now I'm just gonna teach you for loops and while loops, because the while loop is not very different from the while loop. 
So right now, four. Okay. Okay, first we're gonna d define a string variable called start. So string star we're gonna initialize as empty. A for loop is starts with a four, then run bracket, then the counter, loop counter. So you can define the loop counter outside as int i equals zero, or you can de define it inside int i equals zero, then a semicolon, then you put in the number of times you want the loop to run. For instance, here I'm gonna write in i less than n. So I will run until its value is less than n. For instance, if the n is 5, then I will run when its value is 4, until its value becomes 4. After its value becomes 4, it, its value will be incremented by 1. That is, I, I will become 5. And since 5 is not less than 5, the loop is stopped. Now, here we define the increment counter. I++. plus plus. I++ plus plus is equal to I++ plus I plus plus is like I equals I plus 1. The exit so for loop, well, whatever you put in inside here will run until the loop conditions are met. Here I'm just gonna write in um, star equals star plus asterisk star. So every time the loop is run, one star is added. Seems pretty simple, but yeah, it is simple right now at this stage. But as soon as you move into more complex applications, it's going to be very hard to implement. So now we're going to display the stars to the user. So j option pane dot show message dialog no star. Right? Okay, let's save this star.java stars.java this is saved now so we can run it I'm just gonna use the F4 shortcut key here the compile Java is F4 and run Java is F5 so I'm just gonna use the shortcut keys henceforth so F4 is just gonna compile it process exit code is 0 so we're good to go F5 stars oh three stars three stars are there we run it again. Um, two stars. Two stars. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna give it a bit hard. 20 stars. 20 stars seems 20, I don't know. Okay, you run it again. Uh, the, okay, I'm gonna give it 100 stars. This is 100 stars, doesn't seem so, but I don't know, I don't want to check. Must be 100, because... Okay, to test if the program is correct, you need to test it using smaller values. And that way you'll be able to validate if the thing is working or not. So uh, so if I check for 2 stars, I can count that these are 2 stars, and hence the program was perfectly fine. However, if I start checking by him writing 100, I can't, because it is too small and it's hard to read so there's no point okay now this was the for loop we are gonna put in a while loop inside a while loop we're gonna put in if statement because we don't have a real while loop here so oh okay we can put in a while loop okay we'll put in a while loop while while loop start with while then bracket then the condition which you want to test each time the loop is run. So here the condition, okay. We need to define the loop increment counter outside. So I'm going to define int i equals zero, initialize it to zero. Then while loop curly bracket i equals n. So I define. Okay. This. Then it this loop will run until the value of i becomes equal to n so if n is 5 till the value of i becomes 5 this loop will continue to run so here I'm just gonna put star equals star plus star and
Okay, in the for loop we had a a separate parameter for incrementing the value of i. In while loop we don't, so we have to increment it manually. So i equals i plus one. Now, mark here. Yeah, instead of writing i equals i plus one, we can write i plus plus. Okay, now let's run this loop. Oh. Something's wrong in our program. I've put in i equal i equals i plus one, but it didn't work. I don't know it should work. I'm trying. If you if you stick in such problem you, you have to debug your program yourself. If you do that, this that is really helpful. So let me check once more. Okay, so stars are not displayed. Okay, look, in the while loop you have to say, as I said, in while loop uh, the loop runs until condition is met. So while is not equal to n, that is the not equal to operator. And until the value of i is not equal to n, the loop will continue to run. As soon as the value of i becomes equal to n, it will stop. So now I'm gonna do this, this, three, two. Okay, oh, oh, okay. Less than four, five, two, one, okay. Sydney course. Four, five, two, two. This is it. That is called program debugging. That is how you debug your program. You you check what you have done, and then you check what the output is, and then you try to understand why the output is like that. So you get the you get the solution to your error. I mean, if you have if you have marked, then the error was not here. It was a logical error. There are certain errors which you can't catch. Those are logical errors. Okay. Uh, since you have done with the loops, uh, we've got another thing coming up. It's called a switch statement. Switch statement switches the value until one becomes possible. Uh, I'll I'll just show you um, a sample, like okay we're gonna devise a program oh. we're gonna make in an, another program and all the program does is it takes input from the user saying please enter employee type serial number if the user prints in one it will say manager if the user types in two it would say, uh, it would say, worker. If the user types in three, it would say general manager. And if the user types in four, it would say CEO. However, if none of the values match, then it would just say, uh, uh, please type in valid number. So let's start. Jawax dot swing dot j forget this employee public okay and it's gonna be int n equals Okay, and the next one coming up is that the switch. 
So we're gonna check the value of n. So it's gonna be switch. We're gonna check value of n. So switch n. Case. What happens if the value of n is one? So whatever is gonna happen, we type in here, like show message dialog general manager. Note that after every case, you have to break it. So you break it by writing this. If you miss the break statement, the case will continue, and that would mess up whole thing. Case two. Show message dialog. General manager. I just change a bit here. Break. Case three. Show message dialog. No. Um, helper break and then the next is default default is always the last case default is I mean what happens if the, all of the cases don't match then the default is run so show message dialog uh, please check input and try it again break and we hope that works save it as just gonna run it oh J option pane So everything's good to go and time for number one. General manager is here. We type in two manager. We type in three helper. We type in four. Please check input and try again. Now let's experiment what happens if you remove the break statement here. It will still compile. But when you run it, and if you type in 1, it will say general manager, and then it will say the manager. Since the case is not broken, it will continue to the next case until it is broken, which is here. So, and that's why break statement is essential. If you miss the, if you don't want to write the default statement, then it's entirely up to you, it doesn't matter. But it is a good practice to write a default statement to check if what happens if the cases are wrong or invalid or something like that. So it is a, it is a good practice to write a default statement, but it's not compulsory. Okay, so that was our switch statement. People use switch statements to avoid nested ifs because switch statements really help avoiding nested ifs by switching the case each time a value is changed however if you are if you are used to if statements and if you can manage the braces and all the stuff then if statements provide great flexibility in against the switch statements so it is very good practice to use switch statements in place of nested ifs to avoid your curly bracket problem Okay, so I'm just going to finish up here. Today we've learned about loops. We have learned about the switch statement. We have learned a bit more about if statements called nested ifs. And so we're going to, so I'm just going to clean it up all here. And okay, see you in the next session. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.